Hey everyone, welcome back to Higher Learning Test Prep's online video tutorial series. Today I want to take a look at a problem that one of my students was struggling with. In fact, I was a little overwhelmed by this question at first too. It's number 8 out of 8. Um, the section would have 18 questions. The first 8 will be multiple choice. The next 10 would be grid in. So the last question in any given format is usually the hardest one. Number 8 out of 8 here. So, if we read this question, it says A, B, C, D, and E are to be arranged in the boxes above, one in each box, in the following way. A must be between C and D, B must be next to E, and C cannot be in the first or fifth positions. How many different arrangements of these letters are possible? And if this makes you want to scream or freak out or quit school forever, I totally get it. Um, I'm going to make five bigger boxes over here so we can think a little bigger. The power of thinking big is pretty amazing, you know, so we're going to think a little bit bigger than the boxes there. If you need to think bigger, sure, draw bigger squares for yourself. This is as big as I can think. Okay, so for instance, a couple of the things that are confusing. First of all, this is just a bunch of, a bunch of language here, and this can be confusing. My student found this to be pretty confusing. The part that I particularly thought was confusing was that A must be between C and D. So I thought, like, does that mean, like, A could... It has to be between C and D like this, C, A, D, or could we potentially have, you know, a, a D, A, C, was that an option? And then my mind even started going, well, could it be like a D over here and a C here? Or can we do like a C here and a D here? So that A's in between it, but it seems like there's all these different ways, or even maybe C over here and D over here, or vice versa. You could see how your mind could go crazy with all these potentialities, all these um, possible outcomes without really seeing the problem all the way through. So what we're going to do instead is to think about what we can actually do here. Like not all the potential situations, but let's use the actual letters and see what's going on. As it stands to begin with, A, B, C, D, and E, let's start by saying those could be in any box. So if we look at um, some of the restrictions. A must be between C and D. Well, that another way of saying that is that A can't be on the end. So A is not a possibility for this first box. And I'll actually write that on the end down here too. Because A has to be between two things, it can't be on the end. Now B must be between, or B must be next to E. C cannot be in the first or fifth positions either. Okay, so actually in the first box and in the fifth box, our only options are B, D, and E. So let's start making some of these uh, situations possible here. Let's see, if we put a B here, E must be next to it. So E has to be here. And if in this situation we use B and E in the first two, and the only options for the end were B, D, and E, well, it has to be a D on the end. We've already picked B and D, uh, E. Okay, so also what we could do is put this E on the end, because B has to be next to E. Here's a B. Now, again, all we have left is a D. If we put a D on the end instead, now, we start saying, well, what could be in this next one? I'm not sure yet, but I do know that B and E have to be next to each other. And because my only options down here, after we figure out the A and C can't be on the end, were B, D, and E, I've already got my D chosen. E or B has to be on the end here. If E's here, then here, I'll write it over here. B's here. If uh, B is on the end here, then E must be this next one in, in our, another situation with D on the end here. Okay, so we've exhausted our possibilities for what can be on the end. Um, we have two possibilities with B and E on one end, two possibilities with B and E on the other. Now, you might say, well, is there multiple sets here? Can we do like A, C in this one, or also C, A? Well, let's think about that. What do they say are our restrictions regarding A and C? It says that A has to be between C and D. That was the part that freaked me out at first. So, in this one, we only have one option for our first. C must be on the outside of A. If D is on the right, C must be on the left. Um, again, on this next one, because D is on the end, this must be the setup. Now, for our other two, because D is on this end, A must be between... D and C, we're going to have D on the left, A in the middle, and C on the right. 
So we only have actually four possibilities. And that only took us a couple minutes. This is supposed to be a really hard question. I mean, you should know, first of all, don't be overwhelmed because there's the, the most there could possibly be is eight. That's not going to take you that long to figure out. Notice also that eight is an answer that if students didn't think this last part through, if students just thought, well, there's two possibilities with each of these. We could have, you know, B, E, C, A, D, or we could have B, E, A, C, D, or something. If you didn't think that all the way through, you might think, oh, I got four, I'll just double them. So lots of tricks, uh, little twists uh, in play in these questions, but I think you can see that if you work through the actual possibilities instead of being hung up on um, all the um, hypothetical possibilities, you know, like I did at first, where where the heck is is if it is A here and C's here and D's here or is it D over here and all those you can see how your your mind could go crazy with those ideas. If you just start working through it, there really wasn't that many. And the answer choices here let me know that that's true. Use the answer choices to help you. Um, put pen on the page or pencil on the page rather um, and do some real tangible work instead of thinking of philosophy, uh, philosophizing about this or uh, anything like that. Don't get overwhelmed. Put the pen on the page and start working through some stuff. Okay, get in touch if you need any more help. We'd be happy to answer any questions you have whatsoever regarding the ACT or the SAT. Take care.